today will be another day of the late night thoughts. And in case you do not know what is that, it's my latest series of opinionated videos, where it's more like a podcast where I share what I think about certain subjects or topics. And today's topic will be on this. Not the Canon 50mm, but primes that are really fast or ultra wide ultra fast, not ultra wide, ultra fast primes. Primes like the 50mm 1.2 or my recently reviewed 33mm f0.5, 0.95 Argus or something like the recent Canon rumor 60mm f1 or maybe something like a 200mm f2. Those lenses that I said earlier are considered ultra fast for their focal length. And today's topic is really talking about them and why I think that they have a position as a portrait photographer's lens. I'm not going to sell you any lens today. In fact, I'm not going to review any lens today. I'll just talk about why I think that such a lens are actually pretty good. I mean, they are expensive and they have very fast aperture. Sometimes they have very nice bokeh. But the reason is that these lenses are versatile because they give you options. Now, having a very wide aperture, such as f1.2 in this case, doesn't mean that you have to shoot at 1.2. You can shoot at f2, you can shoot at f2.8, you can shoot at f11. No problems, right? Now, having a large aperture lens gives you many options. The first option is you can shoot at f1.2. So you get that bokeh look that everybody talks about in portraiture that is overused at times. Even I fall into that trap at times. But not only do you get the bokeh, you also get shutter speed. Now, why is that important? If you are doing spots or you are shooting fast-moving portraiture with modern cameras such as the R5, R6, A9, A1 by Sony, you can actually eye autofocus with such fast lenses. It opens up opportunities. With a f1.2, you can get shutter speed that you could not get in the past. Of course, you can say I can boost ISO, but there is a limit to how much you can boost, right? But this is a physical property. You have a faster lens. It's a physical property. Now, let's say, for example, you talk about a f2 lens. So that is a one and a half stop difference. Now, one and a half stop, a lot of people say, why not I just boost one and a half stop of ISO? But what if I tell you that you are shooting in a condition, you want that particular action shot and you want the maximum dynamic, dynamic range. Raising ISO is not a way to improve your dynamic range. In fact, lowering it is the way. So you want to shoot at ISO 100 and you want to shoot and maintain as much dynamic range as you can. Now, if you are shooting at f2 lens, you will have one half stop less light and that will penalize your shutter speed. How is that a big deal? If this lens gives you a one, one over 1,000 shutter speed, a one half stop will drop your shutter speed to 1 over 300. And that makes a lot of difference, especially if you are shooting such as flaring dresses. If you want your model to spin and the dress to flare, with this lens, the dress will be bokeh, that's for sure, but you will have a frozen action, which is really beautiful. While if you use 1 over 300, unless artistic direction says that you want that, you know, moving dress itself, the, the, the motion blur, if not, it will just look different. And it's not about the dress, it's about the eyes. Nobody wants motion blur in the eyes. Now, 1 over 300, if the model is spinning fast enough, will actually induce motion blur. You can try it out. You will actually have a chance to induce motion blur. So as such, you know, having... Extra aperture sometimes is not about just having bokeh. It's about having the shutter speed. And with modern lenses, you can't actually utilize this shutter speed because you can't autofocus fast enough to capture the moment itself. So in the past, you no, know, this statement may not hold because most cameras cannot autofocus fast enough. But in today's world, with the R6, R5, A1, A9, I think this is very true. You can definitely utilize a f1.2 to its limit for shutter speed itself. 
And also there is night photography and I don't need to explain further. There's only that much ISO you can bump. There's only that much image stabilization can help you. F1.2 will definitely give you a better result than an F2 no matter how. In a late night condition, in the night time, you want to do night portraiture. This is definitely a better choice than an F2 lens. So it's options. Now the other thing is also when you stop down those lenses. These lenses are premium lenses. They cost three or four times more than their F2 counterparts. Uh, they provide you the ability to shoot at faster aperture. But you must not also forget that when stop down, these lenses are optically usually superior. What I mean by superior is that at F2, they will usually have no chromatic aberrations, no vignetting. Normally vignetting goes away. They have sharpness all the way to the corner. Is that important or not? That's up to you. But most importantly, they have contrast and details everywhere. This will result in, sometimes people say, as the micro contrast, the pop shot. These are things that will happen when you stop down really fast lenses. So we should not discount that these premium lenses are actually really good when stopped down. So why do I recommend such a lens? Because versatility. You can shoot at high, big aperture with high shutter speed to get motion. You can utilize the bokeh when needed. And when you want sharpness, you want details, you can always stop them down to f4, f5.8 to get the shot that is really tech sharp all the way to the edges, ultra good contrast, very detailed shots. Now, I'm not, I'm really not uh, saying some, you know, how do I put it? You can actually go to this website called Optical Limits and see for yourself that usually a good prime like this when stop down is better, usually better, usually better than a more affordable prime stop down. So if you are doing studio shoot, a 50mm 1.2 still benefits you because when you stop that down to f4, f5.6, you will get a very crisp shot in your portraiture that if you use a more, I'll say a more affordable lens, it may not be as crisp. And that's because of the details, the contrast and the sharpness itself. So all in all, ultra fast primes are not just for bokeh. Do not always think that they are just for bokeh. But they can also be used for many options. Shooting in low light, sh fast shutter speed so that you can capture the action. Or when stop down, normally they outperform their more affordable counterparts. So that is something to note really. And with <laughs> this trend of having more and more ultra fast primes, I think that, you know, people can consider getting them and uh, have sometimes have fun shooting at f0.95 like I had with the Argus. But that lens at f2 is insane. It is ultra sharp. I mean, seriously, the Argus 33mm f0.95 at f2, I think it will beat almost any, uh, most X-mount lenses at f2 easily. Now, of course, there are exceptions to what I said just now. Uh, and that is when a slower lens is still really expensive, such as tilt shift lenses. A tilt shift lens that is f4 or f3.5 will cost more than this prime here. And those lenses are ultra sharp no matter which aperture you set them. There are always exceptions. Or like the GFX lenses, the f4 zooms are ultra sharp compared to the primes. Yes, they are less sharp than the primes, but it's very negligible in the GFX series. So there are exceptions, but price is the determining factor. So in the end of the day, ultra fast primes, like these kind of lenses with very large apertures, are really here to give portrait photographer options, options that are really important, that will help you and may benefit you as an artist itself. Now, if of course, if you can't afford it, get the cheaper options. And one day, if you can afford it, upgrading to one of these lenses normally can last you 10 years, if you ask me. Because uh, lenses do not refresh that often. Most of these lenses last 5 to 10 years before their Mark II version comes out. So buying a lens one year after its launch is quite a good, uh, good, good idea. Firstly, it's more affordable because street price will have dropped by then. And not only that, they are as good as it gets for maybe the next 8 years down the road. Maybe until Sigma tries to break the market again with their art series lenses. Maybe they'll call it something different in the future, but whatever it is, 
that is my opinion on ultra fast lenses and i hope you enjoy this short little video here till next time bye bye